Hi, I'm Jim from jimthebikeguy.com and I'm here today with Dave Arthur from Just Ride Bikes and we decided to get together and make a video about setting up and adjusting your front derailleur. Um, a lot of people have problems with these because they either rub or they don't line up correctly or uh, sometimes the chain drops off the outside or the inside. So we're going to go through the, the process and the principles today um, on how to set one of these up. Now, before we start, um, this video assumes a few things. It assumes that your bike is in reasonably good mechanical condition, so your chain rings aren't worn out and your chain isn't worn out because that would affect this. And that's probably something where you might need a bike mechanic or a shop to help you with that. So on the assumption that your bike is fit for duty. Um, and this video also does not apply to electronic drive trains. Right, let's carry on. Just so you know, this video is sponsored by Muckov and right now you can get 20% off all your cleaning and lubing products using the code on screen now. Before we start, uh, some tools that you're going to need. Generally speaking, regardless of what type of uh, derailleur you're setting up, you're going to need the following things. So I have got a Phillips screwdriver there sort of medium to small size, not a real microcosmic one. A little flathead screwdriver sometimes comes in useful if you've got uh, stubborn screws. I've got a 5mm Allen key or hex key, um, which some of the uh, cable attachment bolts use. I almost guarantee you will need a 4mm um, hex key um, for the cable pinch bolt. And for the newer type front derailleurs, which I'll reference again at the end of the video. The Shimano stuff now uses a 2mm hex key um, instead of screwdrivers. So have one of those handy in case that's the type that you've got. Okay, so before we carry on, it's important to kind of understand the component parts, if you like, of um, a front derailleur. So it will feature inevitably the following things okay so you will have a cable attachment point there will be somewhere on the front derailleur a high and low limit setting screw or bolt and the chances are they'll have a little h and an l written on them but if they don't i'll show you how to identify them there will be somewhere on that front derailleur or more likely upstream a tensioning device and that's really important because it's really hard for you to get enough tension into a front derailleur the cable by just pulling it with a pair of pliers or something kind of neanderthal like that so absolutely 100 percent the only way a front derailleur is ever going to work well is if there's a tensioning device in the system somewhere so this is an inline barrel adjuster type but there may be a device actually built onto the front derailleur itself if it's one of the newer types. So that's four things already. The other thing is there'll be a point at which the entire front derailleur itself is fixed onto the frame. So this is a brazon type. You can see there's this kind of horseshoe shaped adapter thing here on the frame and the derailleur is bolted onto it. So that bolt there um, it might be like a ring-shaped clamp, um, in case you're worrying that yours doesn't look like that. But it's still the same thing. There'll either be a band or a brace on. But that bolt position is really important because no front derailleur is ever going to work unless it's at the right height above the chain ring and it's actually in line with the chain ring. Let me do that with my hands at a different angle like that. So effectively, height and alignment for a front derailleur is really important. So we'll probably check that first before we go on to some of those other things that we just talked about. So the first bit I want to do with you is I want to get my 5mm Allen key, which serves two purposes on this. And I want to check that this front derailleur, before I even get into tuning it for kind of functionality at the shifter, I want to check that it's actually in the right place. 
um, and quite often it's not. So there are two things I'm going to do here. I'm going to look down through the top of it. So with the chain in the big ring, which it is conveniently right now, I'm going to look down through the top and I'm going to ask myself, does it look like the plates of the derailleur are sitting exactly parallel and in line with the chain ring? Walk around it a bit, you know, take a sort of view from different angles and ask yourself, actually helps to turn it as well a little bit like that, which is why work stands so useful. Have a bit of a look and just say, are those plates nice and in line with that top, uh, with that chain ring? This one is actually. If it isn't, okay, before you do anything else, you need to shift down to the small ring, because otherwise it's gonna trap your fingers, and you need to detach the cable. And I'm gonna do that anyway, because later in the process, I'm gonna to need to detach the cable anyway to go through the whole setup. So let's do that now. So this is an old uh, um, Ultegra 6800 front derailleur. Lovely thing, I always quite like these. Good leverage ratio, easy to set up. Um, and I'm just gonna de detach the cable from it up here at the top. So let's do that now. So I've done that. So although I haven't completely removed it from the front derailleur, you can see I've undone the clamp enough that the cable is no longer actually affecting its, its um, tension. So given that I've now detached it, you can see that by definition that front derailleur has got no choice but to spring in board because the only thing that was holding it out here was the cable. So right now it's flopping around freely, look. But that's fine because it gives you a second chance to examine it for being sort of aligned correctly in line with that chain ring. It definitely is. But the other good thing is you can also check the height. So the height's really important. Um, you might remember from when you got your bike and it was new, I bet you when it came from the shop, there was a little orange sticker perched about there with a picture of some chain ring teeth on it. And that's actually a height guide that Shimano helpfully put on front derailleurs. I think they still do it on just about everything they sell. And it kind of shows you where that front derailleur cage should lie in relation to the um, big ring. And you can sort of simulate it yourself. So you can see, it must be about right, because when I pull it out board like that, it clears it. Imagine if that was a half an inch lower. As soon as I did that, it would belt these teeth. And a good little measurement, which I think uh, was said to me years and years ago, but it's proved as a rule of thumb pretty good. If you can get a pound coin in there, that's pretty good, to be quite honest with you. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the low limit screw. So we're going to set the low limit of this derailleur so that the chain doesn't fall off inboard. That's the low side. Okay, The inside of the bike is your lowest gear. So in order to do this, I need you to shift into first at the back of your bike. So that is all the way onto the biggest cog at the back of your bike. Because what you're aiming to do now is set the front derailleur far enough in board that the chain doesn't rub unnecessarily on it, but not so far in board that the minute you put it on the small ring, the chain jumps clean off of it because the derailleur is too far that way to stop it doing that, okay? And the way you're gonna set that is you're going to get your handy Phillips and you're going to find your low limit screw which on most derailleurs is where the low chain ring is so the low limit screw is on the low side of the derailleur in board but I would say do some research first and find out where it is because some derailleurs have them crossed around for some reason it's a bit annoying um, and sometimes it's in the right place, but there isn't a little letter L scratched anywhere on the derailleur. So do try and sort of do some work around identifying which of your limit screws is which. But for the sake of this, I'm telling you now, it's that one there. I know it is, because I love these front derailleurs, and they're great. 
and you're going to take your Phillips and you're going to pop it into your low limit screw like that and you're going to adjust it in such a way with your bike in first gear at the back that you leave no more than maybe half a mil to a mil maximum of daylight between the inner plate of the derailleur, that's this one at the back, and the chain. And you'll know you've got it right because you'll give it a bit of a turn and it'll sound quiet. So we've set that lower limit screw and before we carry on, we need to now reattach our cable. So let's do that. Now cable attachment points on different derailleurs can be a bit of a pickle. As a general rule on one of these Shimano type ones, have a good look at the cable bolt attachment if you've had to completely remove the cable because quite often there'll be a line guide that runs through it and there'll be a, um, a cut actually behind the bolt. So really look at making sure that you get your cable stretched the right way through all of those different kind of knick-knacky components um, because it massively affects the next step. Okay. So I'm going to reattach my cable and quite simply in order to do that I'm going to give it a little bit of a pull and I'm going to make sure that I've taken all of my shifts out of the system because the worst thing you can do is attach your cable whilst actually the shifter still thinks you're in the big ring because you're never going to get any success out of that. Get hold of it, try and remove as much slack from it as you can like that and then just do up your... Um, clamp bolt. So without any cable tension, this front derailleur is never going to work that well. Let's try and demonstrate it now. So I've just reattached the cable, I've established my lower limit and I've reattached the cable and I'm going to go for a shift and let's see what it does. Yeah. So it's trying but it can't do it and that's because downstream the cable is just too slack. So let's tension that cable. So on this particular bike, the barrel adjuster that we've got is called an inline adjuster because it's in a line and it's in the uh, front shift cable which runs all the way around here. And the way that these work are rather like the uh, frets, I think, on the head of a guitar, those key shaped things that kind of get you a better note. You know, you string the guitar string tighter and then it comes into tune. Well, that's kind of what we're going to do here. So all you do is as you wind this thing out, it separates the two halves and pulls the slack out of that derailleur cable. Now I'm going to sound a note of caution here. This hardly ever works first time with this type of system. <laughs> Quite often what happens is you'll go all the way out and there'll be a max limit adjuster on this somewhere. And even then sometimes it's not enough, but let's see what happens. Sometimes you end up having to go back to the bolt, undo it and really, really pull hard on the end of that cable and then repeat this process. But you can see that I've wound that out now. And if I twang that cable there now, it's pretty good. It's not playing a guitar note to me. Um, but what it is doing is I can see that that barrel adjuster has taken the slack out of the system. Um, so I think I'm just going to try a shift. And there's a bit of trial and error in this. You know, I'm a bike mechanic and I kind of do this for um, a job. And quite often you have to have two stabs at setting up a front derailleur because they just are annoying things, quite frankly. Um, but let's go for it. So once again, um, I'll take a few shifts out of the back actually while I'm at it, just to give myself a bit more of a reasonable chance. Happy days. Okay. That worked really well. Thanks front derailleur, you made me look really good there. Now you might think, we're done now. You're not. There's one more thing we need to do. We didn't set our high limit. How am I gonna stop when I make that big ring shift? How am I gonna stop that chain flying over the top and down the outside? Well, that's what your high limit screw does which will be marked with an H, I would hope. Grab your Phillips 
and your high is the other one. So it's not the low. So it's this one here. And now the aim here is to set the position of the front derailleur plate, the outboard plate now, such that when you shift up to the big ring, that derailleur doesn't travel so far across here that actually it comes all the way out and throws a chain off the side. So the high limit screw is a restrictor. You're aiming to arrest the movement of the front derailleur and stop it going too far. So let's have a look at what it does when I turn it, okay? So our aim with this is to set it far enough out that when you are in uh, top gear, which is both derailleurs all the way out from the bike, i.e. that one there, your fastest, meatiest gear, it's not rubbing on the outer plate of the derailleur, but you're also aiming to restrict its movement that it doesn't come clean over the top. So you need to put your bike in top, which on this one is technically speaking 11th or 22nd, depending on how you wanna kind of um, view it. And then basically, a good way of doing this is have a listen and have a look. So it sounds a little bit clunky to me. That's the sound of the chain rubbing against the inner plates of this front derailleur. So what we really wanna do is remove a little bit of restriction from it. And the other way to check this is you can still manually activate the derailleur with your hand like that. So if you want to, you can still move it and see, um, is there any sort of, there we go, look. So I've let the screw out a little bit more and with my hand, I'm checking how far outboard the front derailleur actually wants to travel. And that's gone quiet now because effectively that little bit of me winding the limit out has just released it far enough outboard that when I go into top gear, I'm not getting that rub. But it also means I haven't released the limit enough for it to go too far outboard. And I'm gonna demonstrate that principle now. So I'm gonna wind the limit right out on this front derailleur and show you what happens when you've got no limit whatsoever. So let's go all the way out with that screw. Here it comes, look. And I'm gonna manually throw the chain off the top for you. You ready? Over we go. So that's what happens if you don't have enough high. So let's put that high limit back in place. Because as we can see, look, I can do this all the way up out there with my hand, but not enough high limit at all. Screw's still all the way up in the sky. So let's wind that back in. And you'll know when you've kind of got it right because at the minute the screw isn't hitting anything at all. Because what there is underneath the back of there, there's a kind of like a hammer stop type of a thing. Screw comes up to a kind of bit of the derailleur and it contacts it and you'll feel the screw suddenly start to go tight when it's actually imposing some kind of limit. Test it again with your hand. Yep, there's still a little bit of spare in that. Have a look down the inside of it. Just check for daylight. Same principle. On the outside now, what I really wanna do is get to a point where I've maybe only got sort of a millimeter of daylight, but it's gone quiet, something like that. Take that little bit of extra spare movement out of there. So a little bit more high limit, I think, maybe on that. There you go. I just saw it bite, I just felt that screw bite and now it's actually having an effect on the front derailleur. Test it with my hand, yeah. So there's no spare movement in that that might accidentally happen from the shifter. And we will finish by going through the motions on it one more time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bang a load of big ring to small ring to big ring to small ring shifts on it and then I'm going to tell you about the trim function, which it would appear to me nobody really knows about. Okay, let's give it a bit of a check. Small ring, big ring, small ring, big ring, small ring, big ring. 
And I'm going to say, you know what, if it does that routine for you four or five times on the bounce without chucking its chain off, you've probably got it right. Um, and it probably means the bike's fit to ride and take out in the street. Um, so yeah, pretty good. Let's talk briefly about cross chaining and trim. So while we're on the subject of uh, front derailleurs, it's probably a good time to cover um, cross chaining, which is a controversial topic, um, but I better tell you what it actually is. So cross chaining effectively is when you are uh, sending the chain diagonally across the drivetrain would be a good way of putting it because you've got a two by system at the front. So your chains are either in the big ring or the small ring. And a good way of sort of thinking about it is you've gone big, big. So I'll do it now, okay? So we're big at the front and we're going all the way to the back, all the way into third. And I'm hoping that you can hear that noise there now. And quite often, you can hear it again. Quite often, I'll service a bike for someone and within a few days they come back to me and they say the gears aren't set up right. And it's because they're cross chaining and no one told them that if you do that with the chain and bend it all the way across like this, so it's no longer in a line, but now it's doing that, inevitably the chain is gonna start clouting the inside of the front derailleur and making a noise. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. It's built into the system. Or is there something you can do about it? Yes, there is. There's a trim function. So the trim is a half shift on your uh, left-hand shifter over here. And what it's for, it's for this exact situation where you are um, still in the big at the front, but you wanna throw it into first gear at the back. So you want to cross chain briefly, maybe because you're on a bit of rolling terrain and you don't really wanna go into the first gear, but you wanna take that annoying noise out of the drivetrain. So the way you get your trim is a little soft half click on the left hand shifter, not a full shift down to the um, small ring. There it was. And what that does imperceptibly is it moves the front derailleur inboard just enough to quieten it down when you are cross chaining. That's gone beautifully. This is a really good front derailleur. So you can hear now, I'm cross chaining all day long and that noise has gone out of it because I've trimmed the front derailleur with that half shift on the left lever. It does require you to get a feel for it. It's not a full click. Okay, so before we finish the video, um, it's worth showing you some different shaped front derailleurs because they are changing. There are different models out there and some of the newer Shimano ones don't look like what I showed you earlier in the video, but the principles are the same. There will always be a bolt that fixes it to the frame and aligns it up and down, left and right. There will always be a high and low setting device somewhere on it, and there will always be a way of then tensioning that cable. So on this particular derailleur, which is an Ultegra R8000 one, I'm going to point those out to you now, just for reference. So on this R8000 here, um, we've got your good old uh, derailleur clamp bolt there, which is exactly the same as the old one, but there's no barrel adjuster. The barrel adjuster is in the derailleur itself, and it's this little two mil Allen key bolt here. Look, I'll wind it out and in again. That is your tensioning device on this type of derailleur. And I think from memory, the new 105 stuff is exactly the same shape as this, as is the last lot of mechanical Dura-Ace, um, which doesn't exist anymore. The limit screws on this type of derailleur are hidden inside the back, but they do have a little L and an H on them, which is brilliant. And they're in there. And the whole lot on this derailleur is done with a two mil hex bolt, which is fantastic actually. So you are looking to adjust that one and that one, it is written underneath them. And I think that they work the opposite way to the old screw type. I think on these, when you wind them in, 
the derailleur goes the other way. But it doesn't matter because ultimately, one way or the other, you've still got to set those limits as per the system that I told you. And the only other difference to this is it's really hard to find the clamp bolt on one of these and it's because it's hidden under that rubber cover there and the cable routing through them. Um, take a photo of it before you take the cable off is probably the best advice I can give you because it kind of does this and goes all the way around through it and comes around the back. Um, but it's not difficult once you understand it. But it still works the same way as a normal front derailleur. So I've been Jim from Jim the Bike Guy here with Dave Arthur. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been useful. Um, please do remember to like and subscribe and give us some feedback in the comments below if you've enjoyed what we've done, if it's been helpful. Do let us know and we'll see you in the next one.